Hi, so in this problem, we're going to find the volume of the object of the base that's given in the graph. Um, given that the cross section that's perpendicular to the base are squares, give an exact expression or round your answer to at least two decimal places. So here we're given this interesting shape. It's the base of the object and standing up are a bunch of squares because again, it's the volume. Think of it like a little like house, like a box, right? And the standing up is going to be all these squares. But we do see that the graph itself is a line, right? A linear line, the y-intercept seems to be the origin. And then the shape becomes a constant function uh, line on the top right there, right? So we can easily see, let me mark this, that this is going to be y equal 4. And then this line here looks like it's going to be a y-intercept at 0. And it looks like it's going to be up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 3. So up 4 over 3 with a y-intercept of 0. That means this line here is y equals up 4 over 3x. All right, and then we do see that we're going to have this divide right here at x equal 3. Um, because that's when that part of 4 thirds x stops and then y equals 4 begins. All right, so now if we know that the cross sections are all squares and we can kind of draw it like here's a square, right, standing up here. Okay, it's like standing up. Okay, so the thickness of that square is going to be that dx, right, delta x or dx. And then that height is going to be, well, whatever um, y, wherever y equals uh, there at that point, right? But there's going to be a whole bunch of them from 0 to 3. So it's going to run along that line, right? So this would be just whatever y is over there. Okay. So then when it reaches x equals 3, notice your squares just become constant. They're the same area for each squared. It's not changing. Whereas over here in this left side of the x equals 3, notice the size of the square. One of the sides is changing. Like if I had it here, we would see that, oh yeah, it is changing because now that square is a little bit larger. But to the right of x equals 3, they're all the same size, right? So here we can see that the area of the cross section is going to be the area of the square, which is just s squared. So the first thing we want to do is just say, okay, so um, the area of the cross section is the area of the square, right? Which is just the side squared. Okay, so <clears throat> in this case, from the area, so the area for when x is less than 3 is going to be equal to the side squared. So when x is less than 3, but on that right side of 0, okay, we know that the one side of the square is going to be s squared. So that side is going to be whatever the length of 4 thirds x, right, wherever that point is, that length from here to here. Now we have to be very careful because the point right here, this length here, is going to be not the entire side length of that square. So when I say, oh yeah, it's just going to be from here, from here to here, no, that's only half of the side. It's actually this whole piece, right? So let me draw that a little bit in red for you so you can see. So it'll be from here to here. So it will be this height from this x-axis to this y value. 
but because it's symmetric about the x-axis, we know that we could just double it. It's two of them, right? So wherever that y is, which is 4 thirds x, which I'm going to go ahead and put in blue, and then double it because you got to get that bottom as well right that point here now some of you are like well couldn't you just do another one uh with the negative four thirds and the answer is yes but why we work smarter not harder right we're calculus two students so all it is is going to be the height of this y value and then double it and that's only because you get that symmetry about the x x axis okay now when the area of the cross section when x is greater than three, and of course I, we know that it's the upper boundary is five, right? Between three and five, that's going to be equal to the side squared. Well, what's nice about the right side of x equals three is the fact that it's constant. It's a constant function, and this side, notice this length from the x-axis to the graph, no matter where you draw the square, will be the same it is four inch, uh, four units high, right? But of course, that only gives you half of the side. We really know that it's eight, right? Why? Because we're gonna double it, right? So I just, I'm gonna actually put four in blue and then um, double it right here, just so you can see that what that's what we're doing. So if we just simplify this a little bit, we'll get um, eight thirds X and then squared. And then here we'll get four times two is eight squared. And then to simplify it a little bit more, we'll get 64 ninths X squared. And then this one will just be 64. So we know we're gonna split it right at that three. Okay, so that would be like step one. I guess we can put one I. Step two now is we can see that the volume formula is the definite integral on the interval from a to b of the area of the cross section times the base right the volume right it's three dimension area is uh, for this one base times height times width where what well, we already said we identified that the width of all those squares would be delta x or dx so here we know that we can go ahead and set up for the volume So the volume is equal to the definite integral, the first part from zero to three of the ever changing on that line four thirds X, right? So here that would be this one. So let's go ahead and just grab that, right? And then um, we'll put that in parentheses DX plus the one from three to five of this one, 64 dx. And now it just becomes a volume problem all the way, right? So now we can go ahead and integrate. We'll get 64 ninths from the constant multiple rule. Is that the definite, um, the antiderivative of x cubed is just going to be x cubed over, I'm sorry, x squared is x cubed over three from evaluated from zero to three plus 64 on the outside constant multiple rule, and then we get five minus three. And that's just a property of integrals back from chapter five, chapter one. Okay, and so here, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and kick this three out here. So here we're gonna have 64 27th times three cubed minus zero cubed, plus 64 times two, which is 128. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and go to my calculator and just put 64 over 27, and then parenthesis three cubed. Oops, that. And then I'll go ahead and add 128 and we get 192. So this is exact, and we'll put cubic units. Okay, and we can see up from up here that that is the result. So I'll go ahead and box it.
All right, I hope that helps.